You have visited many cities affected by Russian shelling. Where is the worst situation? You know, this is not an easy question. I have not seen Mariupol, but I understand that the situation in Mariupol is the worst. And I have not seen Cherniv yet, although I tried to do so. And there is a very difficult situation. Of those cities that I saw, the city of Otirka suffered the most. This is a half-ruined city. There are no whole neighborhoods in it. For example, the city of Sumy has also suffered greatly, but the destruction is more localized in specific areas. This is a very traumatic story, but from a moral point of view, I was most impressed by the city of Kharkiv, uh, because Kharkiv, although in percentage terms, is much smaller than the city of Otirka, but in Kharkiv, the destruction in the center is very visible. Beautiful European, which has always been an example of pride. There are no safe places in Ukraine now. Yesterday I gave an interview to CNN right from the city square, and they asked the same question about security. I say that on the one hand it is dangerous everywhere, but on the other hand it is much worse for those who are at the front. And we are civilians, we have a chance to hide. Or there is a possibility that the place we are will not be hit by a shell. The military has no such probability. They go into battle and put themselves in danger. And I don't understand why I have to hide behind them. You were in Zaporizhia. Many people from Mariupol come there. How do they feel? I saw people who were lucky enough to leave relatively safely. When I speak relatively safely, I'm reminded of the story of a woman I met at a gas station. She said, we drove all night in the middle of the fields in a motorcade. Artillery fired everywhere. We always had the feeling that our motorcade could come under fire. It was the worst night of my life. What I saw in Saporosa impressed me the most. It's a children's hospital. I've seen children without arms or legs fighting in the hospital for their lives. They were in a humanitarian convoy bombed by the Russians. When you see a small child without a leg, you can't stand it. I cried right in the hospital. My psyche could not stand it. You are now giving many interviews to the Western media as a well-known public figure. What are your main messages to Western audiences? There are two types of messages that I try to convey. The first is emotional and it's very simple. We are grateful to you for being with us and grateful to you for showing what Russian aggression is. The second message is that we need quality air defense and aircraft. And also the economic message. Sanctions need to be strengthened. So the main thing we can ask American, British or French viewers is to ask to influence their companies that continue to work in Russia. Because it's big money that greatly replenishes the Russian budget. You are constantly talking to our soldiers. What do they lack now? We have no advantage in the air. Our air defense works very well. It is almost undamaged. Our pilots work in unique conditions, and according to Western experts, 
So far, the Ukrainian air defense has not suffered significant losses. But it cannot last forever. If the war was fought only on land, we would have already won. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, I can do a lot and bring a lot. For example, my comrades and I did a serious project to help hospitals. The level of this assistance is measured by trucks. And it's not just medicine, it's medical beds, surgical equipment that comes from Germany. Some of it is humanitarian aid some businessmen buy with their own money. But what I do as a moral part of supporting the people, it seems to me very effective. Because thanks to the high popularity and recognition, I can do a lot. I understand this and continue to do so. And I try to be involved in as many things as possible. You sang in the Kharkiv metro and in front of refugees in Lviv. Now, all Ukrainians are experiencing a huge range of emotions. Despair and grief, faith and hope. Do you write new songs about how you feel? It is impossible to write songs consciously. I will tell you this as a creative person, it must be born. There are several reasons why I don't do this. One is that my head and emotions are really busy with others, literally 24-7. The second part is more practical. I am a creator of music who needs an instrument, a, a piano. I don't have it with me. Now I'm home for two days and maybe tonight I'll come and try to play something. Inspiration comes mostly at night or in the morning when you wake up from the sirens and you want to write not so much music as poems. So I wrote a poem, Where Did You Come From, My Hatred. It works too, but it's not a musical story. I recorded a song that we haven't published yet. Not my own, it's a cover of a famous song by Joe Cocker, You Are So Beautiful, dedicated to Ukraine. In the near future, we will publish it and make a special project. Thank you.